Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while since I've done one of these, but we're gonna continue on. Got some more free time now outside of work and life stuff, so figured I'd get back to this. I'm going on Project Euler in C. This is gonna be number 12. I have changed some uh, some CSS for the page here with the, the Firefox extension. Dark background light text. If it's easy to see, good. I'm trying to make it where it's not blinding white because I try to do these things in the evening and at night anyway. Um, if it looks bad, let me know. I can I can definitely change, but I'm going to be keeping it this way for now. But we're going to go on number 12, highly divisible triangular number. The sequence of triangle numbers is generated by adding the natural numbers. So the seventh triangle number would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus, 5 plus 6 plus 7, which is 28. The first 10 terms of this, adding up these numbers, first 10 triangle numbers would be 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, 45, 55, ellipsis. So, what's the factors? You know, you got the factors here. These are divisors of these numbers. So, 10 factors, 1, 2, 5, 10, it can be divided by these. All right, evenly, because they're natural numbers. We can see that 28 is the first triangle number to have over 5 divisors, since it has 6. What is the value of the first triangle number to have over 500 divisors? Ooh. This one's pretty good, pretty easy. I got the answer here. Already, of course. Pull up the old editor, use a notepad++ now, went to the 21st century. And to make compilation easier, I'm using regular make files. So if you want to know, I'm using C11 standard, GCC. Um, all warnings extra pedantic just to make sure I didn't miss anything and there you go pause copy whatever if you want to make it easier just type make and it'll compile faster than typing all this out yourself anyway I'm using the solarized theme again if it's hard to see let me know but it's easier on my eyes so I'm gonna use this or Grovebox or some other easy to see theme for the future in these hopefully the contrast is okay between this and the browser window but just put down 12 Largest triangle number, whatever. Highly divisible, rather. It is a large number, but <laughs> not that bad. Highly divisible. We're gonna use the standard IO header, and we're also gonna use the math header for square root goodness. Because it's a lot faster to compute factors of a number only going up to the square root, which is what we're gonna do. We're not gonna pass anything to our main procedure, so we don't need any arguments. And it with return zero so we don't get any warnings in compiling, but all we're gonna need for this are a few a few integers. I'm gonna make a triangle number integer, just initialize it to zero. I'm also gonna have just checking the sound, an integer for the natural number or x or whatever you want to call it, but it'll be iterating and we'll be adding it to the triangle number. And that's how we're gonna we're gonna compute it. We're gonna have the natural number also, we'll make it zero. We're gonna have another int for, say, divisors or factors or whatever you want to call it. We'll be counting the factors, because once we get over 500, then we'll be done with the problem. Um, we don't really need to initialize that. It'll be initialized in a, in a loop here. And then we're just gonna have a loop counter. That's, uh, that's all we're gonna need. Um, we can use a while loop here. You could use a for loop. I mean, you can use a while, because it's easier, makes it simpler. While one, while true, however you want to do that. Just make sure it keeps running and doesn't end until we tell it to. Uh, but to start off, we start a natural number at zero, so to get the first triangle number here, which is one, one plus two plus three plus four, to get the, the natural number sequence, they're not including zero and it wouldn't matter anyway, so we're not gonna include zero. But it'll be easier to just iterate here at the start of our loop. And then we're gonna add that to our triangle number. Whatever the next natural number is, we're going to add it to the current triangle number to get the next triangle number. And then what we're going to do before we compute it is we're going to reset the divisors because we want to find the first triangle number with over 500. Each triangle number is going to have a different number of divisors. So we got to reset it before we get them each time. And now we'll have our for loop here. Start I at 1 because the divisors are starting at 1. 0 is not really, can't divide by 0, so we're not going to count it. We're gonna start at one, we're gonna go up until the square root of the number. Uh, we're gonna cast it to an int, because we're using integers here. Normally square root's double, but we're gonna make it an int for the purposes of this, because you only need to go to um, the rounded down integer of the square root to compute this. We're using the floor. 
but basically each factor for a number if we find a factor which means a, our triangle number divided by the current i the current natural number has no remainder it'll divide evenly we're going to count that as a divisor but as you're going to see we're actually going to count it as two divisors if our current natural number up until the square root of our current triangle number is a divisor so if it's if they're divided and there's no remainder then we're gonna add it to our divisor sum that we reset every time to get the number for each triangle number so we're adding two each time because if you count the factor for a number say you have 10 over there right 10 has 1 2 5 and 10 if you get to like one one is a factor but you also have 10 on the other side for any number there's at least two factors basically one below the square root and one above the square root once you reach one of the factors and in this case you know one in 10 there's one below the square root of 10 and one above so you add both of them to the divisor list and also you get to two you have two and five are closer to the square root but they're not quite there and then two is below the square root and five is above the square root of 10 and basically that's that's just some math rule you get for computing numbers <laughs> or well for factors of a number but that's why you were adding two every time and then there's only one catch-all for that and that is if your triangle number that you're computing right now is a perfect square and that is if um, oh what we can do is just copy actually but if you multiply the square root by itself and that equals the current triangle number then you have a perfect square such as say like 25 the square root of 25 is 5 and now normally you'd have a number up below and above the square root of the number but if your divisor is the square root of the number then you don't want to count it twice because that'd be counting the same number in 25's case the factors aren't 155 you know 425 you don't count 5 twice you only count it once so in this case, if this is true, if it is a perfect square, then we're going to reduce the divisors by one. Only count the five once in that case, not twice. So we're getting that. That will give us the amount of divisors for the current triangle number. It'll give us the number and its divisors. So after we've gotten that, we want to check if we are at our goal. If the divisor is over 500, because we want the first number that's over 500, we're going to break out of our loop. And then by this point, we should have it, because we're only looking for the first one, not any more than the first one. Um, I'm just going to say whatever the current triangle number is, and whatever the number of divisors. And I'll put a new line. And that should give us our answer, which in this case should be 7657650. Should be. Um, if I did it right and the make file's right and it compiles and all that. So let's find out. Pop up our command prompts. I'm using MinGW on Windows, 64 bit, but 32 works just as well. But it should come with make by default. If you look in the bin folders in there, you should see something called MinGW32-make.exe. And as long as the the main bin folder there, wherever the make is included in your path, add it to your system path, then you should be able to use it from wherever. So this should compute this according to what I put in the make file. GCC 12C12, you know, the warnings. There you go. It types out what you put. You know, we run it by doing 12, it'll run for a second or two. And should give us, yes, 7657650, which has 576 divisors. But there you go. That's the answer to this one. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. This is a slightly different format, trying to do it in a, bitter, a better way over time. So if I ramble on, let me know. That's fine. I can edit it down. But the next one we'll do is problem 13, large sum, which at the current time I haven't done it, but it will be done soon and I'll record it. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.